Hello everyone and welcome to my first Lolita fashion sewing tutorial. In today's video I'm going to show you how to make this super cute tiered skirt to wear throughout the spring and upcoming summer months ahead. This is a super easy and beginner friendly sewing project that doesn't require a lot of time or materials so even if you don't have a lot of experience in sewing you shouldn't find this project to be too difficult. So let's dive in. I based my design for this project off the fully sheared skirts made by the Lolita fashion brand Metamorphose, as I really like the look and style of these types of skirts, especially for the spring and summer months, and also felt like the design would be really easy to replicate. The skirt design that I came up with has a fully sheared waist with a small top ruffle, two rows of elastic, and a gathered skirt made of three tiers. Here are all the measurements you'll need for the skirt, along with an example of how I arrange and cut out all of the pieces on my fabric. I should note that all of these measurements are in inches and do not include a seam allowance, so you will need to add on your own prior to cutting out your pieces. Moving on to the materials, you'll need around two to three yards of your choice fabric for this project. This number may vary slightly depending on how wide the fabric is that you plan on using, but for the skirt that I made, I found that using two yards of this 60 inch wide gingham poly cotton was enough for me to complete this project. This fabric is super lightweight and doesn't wrinkle easy, which I love, and ultimately I just wanted something to create some really cute black and white cords with this summer, and I thought that this would work perfect. You'll also need two yards of elastic for the waistband that's either a half an inch or three eighths of an inch wide. For my skirt, I used 3 eighths of an inch wide elastic since that's just what I had on hand, but either size will work fine for this project. While serger is not required, you will want to finish the edges of all your skirt pieces to prevent excess fraying, especially when you start gathering everything together. If you don't have a serger, you can just use a zigzag stitch on your machine on the widest setting and finish your pieces that way and it works just the same. Once you have everything cut out with the edges finished, starting from the bottom, we're going to take two of our tier three pieces, pin them along one edge with the right sides together, and then sew a straight line of stitches to connect the two pieces in order to give us the full length of our third tier, which should be around 110 inches. After you've sewn the two pieces together, you should have a super long tier three piece that looks something like this. The next thing we're going to do is sew a gathering stitch along the top edge of our new tier 3 piece as well as one of our tier 2 pieces and one of our tier 1 pieces so that we can start working on putting together the first half of our skirt. With the gathering stitches in place, the first thing we're going to do is gather down the top edge of our third tier and pin it along the bottom edge of our second tier. Then you'll just join the two pieces together by sewing a straight line of stitches as shown. Then we're going to gather down the top of our second tier. Fit it along the bottom edge of our first tier, again making sure to pin it with the right sides together. And then once that's finished, we're just going to sew the two pieces together. This next step is optional, however, if you'd like your skirt to have a more quote-unquote brand look, you'll want to do a bit of top stitching along the area where the tiers connect by pushing your seam allowance up towards the top of your skirt and sewing a straight line of stitching close to the bottom edge of where the two tiers meet. Again, this is a completely optional step that you can skip if you don't want to do the extra sewing or just don't like the look of top stitching. However, I really think that doing this helps give your skirt a more finished look overall, in addition to helping your skirt lay flatter when it's worn, so I would highly recommend doing this if you have the time. And just like that, the first half of your skirt is complete. To create the second half of your skirt, you'll just repeat the same process again until you have two fully gathered skirt pieces, which we will then place with the right sides together and pin along the side seams. Then we're just going to sew our two skirt pieces together along the side seams as shown. After our two skirt pieces have been sewn together, the next thing we're going to do is work on hemming the bottom of our skirt. Like I mentioned in the beginning, you will need to add on your own seam allowance, so how much you hem your skirt by will ultimately depend on how much seam allowance you gave yourself at the bottom of your skirt. But for those of you who are curious, for this skirt, I use a half an inch seam allowance for the bottom of the hem. Thank you. 
Moving on to the waistband, we're going to take our two waistband pieces, placing them right sides together, and pin them along both sides before sewing them in place. The next thing you'll want to do is iron your waistband in half as well as press open your side seams. This step really just helps make sewing the top ruffle as well as the elastic channels easier, though you can skip this step if you'd like. With our waistband now nicely ironed, the next thing we're going to do is measure down a half an inch from the top and sew a straight line of stitches around the entire waistband in order to create the top ruffle for our skirt. Then starting at the side seams, you'll want to pin or mark a small opening just big enough to fit your fingers inside of before sewing two additional half inch lines of stitches for the elastic channels. Since I thought this might be a little hard for you to see on my fabric, I made this mini example on some scrap fabric to give you a visual of what your waistband should look like with your ruffle at the top followed by the two additional half inch wide rows of stitching, again making sure not to sew these channels completely closed so that we're able to insert our elastic later on. Next, we're going to pin the waistband along the inside of our skirt, making sure to match them up at the side seams. It's important that when pinning, that you're only pinning the skirt to the fabric of the waistband that's closest to it, as we'll use the other side of the waistband fabric later on to finish off our skirt. Then you'll just want to gather down the top of your skirt to fit along the bottom edge of the waistband and sew it in place. And here's what everything should look like once you've attached the waistband. As you can see, I've only sewn the skirt to the back part of the waistband and will now push the seam allowance up and fold over the top part of the waistband to hide everything. So again, you'll want to push your seam allowance up and fold this top part of the waistband down to cover the seam. And then just sew a straight line of stitches along this bottom edge here, again making sure not to sew your little opening closed just yet as we will still need that later on for the elastic. And here's what you'll have when you're finished. The last thing we have left to do is insert our elastic and close our channels. Starting with the first channel, you'll want to take your first piece of elastic that you've measured to fit around your waist and insert it into the top channel like so. Then you'll want to overlap the elastic by about a half an inch, secure it by sewing several lines of stitches to hold it in place, and then just sew the channel closed. Then you'll just repeat the process again for your second elastic channel and finish off by sewing down the bottom edge of the waistband as well. And just like that, you're done. Now you have a super cute and comfortable tear skirt option to wear for the upcoming summer months ahead. And if you want to make your skirt a bit more decorative, you can always go back and add things like lace along the bottom or keep things simple like I did and sew on some cute little ribbons along the side seams for a really simple but cute summer look. I really love how well this skirt turned out and think it works perfectly for some more casual Lolita looks, especially as it starts getting warmer outside and you really don't want to be piling on a ton of layers to create a cute cord. It's nice to just have a few quick and simple main piece options that you can reach for and pair with things like cut sews. So I'm super excited to see the different ways that I can try to cord this. But anyways, I really hope you enjoyed my first sewing tutorial. Hopefully everything made sense and it wasn't too difficult to follow as I would really love to create more tutorials in the future. Also, if you do use this tutorial to make your own skirt, I would love to see it. So please do feel free to tag me on Instagram at at so underscore black so I can see it too. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Bye!